What's going on YouTube? Bryce Builds It All here, your favorite AMP IA and part 147 instructor. If you are new to the channel, I'll explain that real quick. Um, I am an AMP, I am an IA, and I teach at a 147 school, air aviation maintenance in the greater San Antonio area that is not Hallmark. Um, I never named the school by its exact name. That doesn't make any sense. I never named the school uh, by name because I am not an authorized representative. I'm not authorized to speak on the school's behalf, so I just never say the school that I teach at. But today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about bleeding aircraft brakes. The last video I did was on uh, replacing brake linings. I'm kind of going through some different practical projects um, that you may take as an AMP student at the DME when you test to get your AMP. So if that interests you, please, please stick around. I'll be right back. Anyways, so here we go. I've got two different types of uh, systems on a trainer that we have here at the school. I'm gonna take you to the classroom here in a minute um, and, and break this down even further with the diagram. But this would simulate your brake disc. This would be a multiple disc system where you actually have two discs rotating in here for something heavier, more like maybe more like a business jet. On the right over here is more than likely, I got hydraulic fluid on my hand. On the right over here is more than likely what you will see in a small aircraft like a Cessna 172, and that's actually what this is out of. This is out of um, either a, a Cessna 172 or a Cessna twin of some kind. Now Cessnas are not unique, but they are different in the sense that it's a sealed system. You have your reservoir at the top, you have your supply line, and then you have your caliper down at the bottom. So up at the top you have your master cylinder, um, obviously there's a fluid reservoir above it with a check valve. You then have a small piston assembly in there so that when you push, you can't really see my hand, but when you push on the brake, you push down on that piston assembly and that hydraulic pressure, pressure is fed into the caliper where it is multiplied and dispersed on the brake pads to squeeze the brakes. Pretty simple system. Well, if you have to change the O-rings, if you have to do any work and open the hydraulic system, you've now introduced air into the system, and since air is compressible, it will no longer work. So unlike cars, you don't bleed aircraft brakes with a vacuum system. You actually use a pressure pot, and I have an example of that here. I will try to show it to you um, on camera. This is a very simple system. It's just a garden sprayer. It's just a weed killer and it has been converted with a special on off valve and then a fitting down here at the bottom. Now, a lot of mechanics will elect to use something like this. You can also use just like one of those simple little squirt cans with a plastic tube coming out of the top of it. I've done that before in a pinch. It works, um, but it's not as reliable as this. So first things first, I'm gonna get this connected. My hands are covered in hydraulic fluid and then I'll, I'll show you how this gets connected on the aircraft. Now, this is removed from an aircraft, but this is exactly what you'll have. You'll have a solid line here or a fluid or a flexible line going to a solid line that runs up the landing gear and then goes all the way inside the cockpit up to your master cylinder, which is connected to your rudder pedal assembly. Now, first things first, when you connect these, you don't have to go super tight. There's a little small sort of aluminum plug in there that snugs itself against the bleeder. You don't have to go crazy tight on this. You just snug it down and that's enough. Then you're gonna pressurize the pressure pot. I'm not gonna do it because it's gonna make a mess, but you pressurize the pressure pot, which is, you know, as simple as pumping it. And then you open the bleeder assembly here and open this fitting. Now, a couple of tips that I will give you. If this has been sitting, this line is probably full of air at least down on this side. So what I'll actually do is I'll actually leave it a little bit loose right here and I'll open this until fluid starts to drip out and then I'll close it or I'll snug it up. And that ensures that I'm not introducing air here. Then you get your quarter inch wrench in here and you crack open the bleeder. It doesn't have to go open a crazy amount and you pressurize the system. And what that does is it pushes any air bubbles that are here inside the caliper assembly up and out the top. Now that's important because if you look at this one here, it's got a lot further to go around here and there's a lot of places for air to get trapped. So you need to have, be patient, take your time. If you can remove this so that you manipulate it where it's as, as vertical as possible like this one is, it could be beneficial, but this is a more complicated assembly so you might not do that. You can also what they do what they call bench bleeding, the caliper where you fill this all with fluid before you even stick it on the airplane. And then you do like I did where you, you sort of get that fluid out of this fitting here 
so that there's no air in being introduced at the bleeder. So that way when you open this, this is all already full of fluid and you just have to fill the lines. Now be patient. It takes a minute for these fluid lines to finish and then it comes up to the reservoir. It's gonna be important that you pull this reservoir cap assembly and suck out some of the fluid or make yourself a drain line that you can catch this fluid in a bucket. Cause what's gonna happen if that is open down there, when this fills up, fluid is going to start dumping out. And I will show you in just a second where these are in a Cessna 150, but even in a Cessna 172, these are in front of and below the rudder pedals, blocked off by an aluminum shroud and the interior, they're under the dash, they're very hard to get to. So take a turkey baster, take a vacuum pump, whatever you need to do, and suck some fluid out of this reservoir so that it's not overflowing all over the place. But once the reservoir starts to overflow and is full, you shut the bleeder off, you pull this out, and then you're pretty much done. When you close that bleeder back off and you push on the brake pedal, I promise it will be solid. Um, as long as you didn't introduce any air into here, that will absolutely piss you off. I've had it happen before where this wasn't quite full and it fell over and then the pickup in there drew in some air after I'd already got done almost completely bleeding the brakes and I put a bunch of air in it and I had to start all over from scratch. So be very, very careful not to do that. Now, I'm going to take you to the classroom or a classroom and I'm gonna draw the Piper slash Beechcraft way of doing the brakes so you can understand why it's much more difficult and why you need to be uh, more patient when you bleed those. Piper has a very extensive procedure in their manuals, but I'm gonna explain it more. So if you're interested in that, please stick around for it. I want to say real quick, there are a couple of times I misspeak and call the master cylinders calipers. Ignore that. I hope this turns out well on camera. I have drawn a diagram of a Piper or Beechcraft or even some Cessna uh, master cylinder assemblies with a or brake assemblies with an external reservoir. This would be on the firewall. Now I might do this in several cuts because the screen blacks out on my camera and I want to try to explain all of this as much as I can. So if I abruptly stop, that's why. Uh, but this is one side. This is the left caliper side. There will be something exactly similar for the right caliper side. So I have the pilot uh, left rudder, uh, sorry, yes, left rudder assembly and left brake caliper and the co-pilot left rudder assembly and left caliper. There would be a right brake assembly here and a right brake assembly here. Both the pilot and co-pilot have a set of master cylinders in a piper. Now pipers get even weirder than that because when you come up, there is a parking brake that's sometimes called the Johnson bar that you pull that sets your parking brake. And it's a really good parking brake because it pushes fluid down through the shuttle valve or through the check valves in the pilot and co-pilot master cylinders and squeezes the calipers. Pretty, pretty simple system, but I'm gonna to talk to you about where all of the air can get trapped. Now it's also important to know that up here at the parking brake, this manifold will also tee off and go to the right brake assemblies as well. So there's gonna be one more line coming out of here. Now the nice thing about a Piper is that, or even a Beechcraft, you can connect a drain line into a, a catch can or a bucket of some kind from the reservoir, which is on the firewall. So you don't have to worry about making a mess behind the rudder pedals like you do with a Cessna uh, 172, 150, 180, whatever it may be. But let's say you rebuilt a caliper. You could have even rebuilt a master cylinder, either the pilot side or the co-pilot side master cylinder, because maybe the O-ring on the piston assembly has worn out, but it doesn't matter. You've introduced air into the system and now you're bleeding it out. Well, this air bubble starts here and the air bubble works its way up through the fluid line into the cockpit. Now this is the cockpit junction. We're no longer in the wing or on the landing gear. We're now inside the cockpit. So that air bubble can go one of two places. It can go up into the pilot master cylinder or it can find its way going over to the co-pilot master cylinder and getting trapped in either one of the master cylinders before it works its way out and up into the parking brake and then out into the reservoir. Here's why that is important. When I say it can, I mean that it is absolutely going to go where you do not want it to go. If you want it to go into the left pilot, if you want it to go into the left pilot master cylinder, it's gonna go into the right co-pilot master cylinder because it hates you. So what you end up having to do with a Piper, and Piper explains this in their procedure, so I'll, I'll try to explain it as best as What Piper wants you to do, now this is a diagram to show you the hydraulic 
fluid, but not the actual master cylinder. And it's important to understand that these lines are actually coming off of the side, and there's a stem coming out of the top of this that connects to the rudder pedals, and that's what you're actually pushing on to actuate the brakes. So when you push on your brakes, you're pushing down on these piston assemblies and pressurizing the manifold down to the caliper assembly. So what Piper tells you to do, I think it's like 12 pumps with the brake bleeder open and pressurizing fluid up to the reservoir, they want you to pump each caliper 12 times until they both are firm. And then you close off the bleeder, you make, that, make sure that both master cylinders are still firm, and then you're supposed to do the same thing with the parking brake assembly, which is just up here outside of frame, which if you've never flown a Piper, it has a, like I said, it's a Johnson bar on the panel that you pull. It has a little lock for the parking brake. They want you to pull that six to 12 times to ensure that you've got all of the air out of this system. Now, I wanna mention a couple of caveats. This, might not be exactly how the system looks in the aircraft. It might not be exactly how the manifold looks in the aircraft. It has been probably. Prob I just want to in interject a quick caveat here. This is a, a picture of a Piper rudder pedal assembly. And if you look at it, I was actually wrong. It doesn't really matter. It's still very difficult to bleed the brakes. But if you look at the far left master cylinder assembly, you can see the line coming out of the top is what goes to caliper. The line coming out of the bottom is actually the top because they're installed upside down. And that goes to the output side of the master cylinder assembly on the co-pilot's rudder settle pedal. And the bottom one from that goes to the reservoir for that Johnson bar that I was talking about. So it does actually have to go through both master cylinders. Probably a year since I've had to bleed the brakes on a Piper Cherokee series aircraft. So I don't remember which, um, master cylinder it gets to first I believe it is the if it's the left it gets to the pilot's left if it's the right it gets to the co-pilot's right first um, and then at the top I can't remember how they cross over at the top but it's very 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 rare that you can push the air bubble when you start cycling the parking brake you can accidentally push the air bubble into the right side that you weren't even bleeding and didn't have open because they're all connected up here in the top. So don't trust this mapping of fluid lines um, and where they go. I can't remember exactly where the T's are or where exactly they go. I'll see if I can like put up a screenshot out of one of the Piper manuals to show it. I think it's in there, it might not be. So if it's not, I do apologize. But there you go, everybody. That's bleeding aircraft brakes in about 10 minutes. Um, if you found it helpful, make sure you leave me a like, leave me a comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. If you wanna see me go, a lot more in depth and actually demonstrate this. I can do that. It's just really cold today and fluid is messy, so I didn't want to. I just wanted to kind of talk you through it. Um, yeah, that's going to do it all for this video. Make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And as always, go build something and be easy.